Hello and welcome to another Maxis Tutorial Endo tutorial. My name is Alan Alinas here and I have an interesting tutorial of an internal and external repair of a cervical root resorption that had perforated buccally. Cervical root resorption cases are rare, but their management is often unpredictable and difficult uh, with uncertain outcomes. Uh, this one is a case of a young patient with a resorptive defect uh, on the mesiobuccal aspect of tooth number 30. Here's a tooth from another angle. The resorptive defect was noticed during a routine hygiene visit by the patient's general dentist. The patient experienced pain when an explorer was inserted into the defect and bleeding was induced from the site of exploration. It was diagnosed as a perforation defect caused by uh, pulpal extension of an invasive cervical root resorption in the coronal pulp. The defect was immediately repaired with a small amount of endosequence root repair material by the patient's general dentist and the patient was referred for endodontic therapy. This image shows a tooth a few days following repair when the patient was seen by me for root canal therapy. Now, invasive cervical root resorption is rare in molars. The pathological entities are usually limited to the anterior teeth where the disease process is induced by trauma, a history of orthodontic therapy, internal bleaching using hydrogen peroxide-based solutions, or idiopathically. In this case, the patient recalled banding of the tooth for orthodontic therapy several years earlier. This may have been a contributing factor, we will never know. As a result, endodontic therapy was initiated. Upon access, the large area of resorptive defect became clear in the mesobuccal area of the chamber. This area was curated out conservatively with the aid of a slow speed size four and eight round burrs, along with the use of a large spoon excavator until all resorptive defect was removed and the dentinal walls were completely clean. At this point, the internal aspect of the bioceramic root repair material that was placed by the patient's general dentist could be visualized from the interior aspect of the pulp chamber through the access. Endodontic therapy was then performed as described in previous tutorials using the endosequence or four taper nitile rotary files and its corresponding obturation system using the bioceramic sealer and the active gutta percha. After completion of the endodontic therapy, a layer of opacious wide reinforced composite was etched and bonded to the chamber floor and up to a few millimeters below the cable surface area of the tooth uh, and the axis cavity. Now, I could have filled to the top and completely sealed the axis, um, thereby placing the core, except that my referring dentist had planned to do this part himself and I therefore left room for him to bond the core uh, um, and at the same time was able to perform my uh, important uh, um, concept of doing an immediate dentinal bonding and immediate uh, seal of the dentin. So however, before the tooth were to be restored, I wanted to lift a flap and examine the entire extent of the buccal perforation and replace the endosequence root repair material with a polished composite. This is done because the bioceramic material does not have a highly polished surface upon setting and since this restoration was half above the gingival line, a rough surface could trap plaque and cause periodontal breakdown uh, and that's not something that we would like. Now, furthermore, the complete apical extent of this lesion required confirmation before the case was completed. So a small flap, a small full thickness flap was uh, then raised and the full um, filling and the extent of the cervical perforation was then assessed. The root repair material was completely removed until the opacious white uh, you know, composite that I had placed through the axis uh, was then obvious. The cable surface margins were slightly beveled using an ultrasonic and the entire cavity was etched with phosphoric acid and then bonded um, with thin layers of uh, composite and cured and the surface was then uh, polished. The area was sutured closed and the patient uh, returned in a week to remove the sutures. Three months later the area shows great healing and the gingival tissue has adapted uh, back beautifully and there is no symptoms of percussion or palpation or any other uh, symptoms including bleeding upon probing or sensitivity. Reevaluation in six months now shows excellent healing and now a full coronal restoration has been cemented by the patient's dentist to prevent mesiobuccal uh, cusp fracture. As a result of this procedure and sound diagnostic decision from the patient's general dentist, we managed to save this uh, tooth for this patient before it was too late and we'll follow up with him in the future for monitoring the area. 
I'm Alan Alina Se, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you.